July 1st, the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though the precious blood of our Lord has been used as a synonym for the redemption from the times of the apostles, spread of a special devotion in its honor was due in the main to St. Casper, whose feast day is January 2nd. But the celebration of a feast of the precious blood was observed in some few churches long before this time. For example, an office of the blood of Christ was conceded to the Archdiocese of Valencia in Spain in the year 1582, and a similar office was approved for the Diocese of Sarzana in Tuscany in 1747. The feast was granted to St. Caspar's congregation early in the 19th century. Pope Pius IX extended it to the whole church in the year 1849 amid the trials of the revolution which had driven him from Rome. The feast was at first fixed for the first Sunday of July. This was altered by Pope Pius X to the first day of the month. By the Passionists and some others, a second feast is kept on the Friday after Latari Sunday. The Cathedral Church of the Archdiocese of Westminster is dedicated to the Most Precious Blood. In this feast, the Church rejoices in the celebration of her birthday, for the stream of blood and water which issued from our Lord's side is mystically the beginning of the Church. It was a stream of new life poured out over the world. St. John Chrysostom says in a homily read at Matins, It was therefore out of the side of Christ that the Church was built, just as it was out of the side of Adam that Eve was raised up to be his bride. For even as God made the woman out of the side of man, so Christ gave to us the water and blood from his own side, whence was the church raised up. Let's think a little deeper about this feast. First, let's think about what blood is and what it signifies. We all know that blood is an important part of our body and an essential element of our person. Therefore, we owe the same adoration to the blood of Christ that we owe to Christ himself. Blood flows inside our body, which is its natural condition. Thus, every effusion of blood, everything that makes the blood issue from our body, has a catastrophic character. Bloodshed speaks to us of violence, of crime. It's impossible to speak of bloodshed without thinking of the blood of Abel. Murdered by his brother Cain, Abel's blood rose to heaven, calling for vengeance. When we think of the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that blood generated in the womb of Our Lady, the blood of David, the blood hypostatically united to the second divine person, we should consider that his blood symbolizes all the dignity of his body and is joined jointly to his divinity. Hence his blood should be given the same reverence as his divinity. Considering the blood that our Lord shed, it is important to note the mercy of God who desired it to flow with an unheard of abundance. Every drop of blood in the body of our Lord was shed to show that he gave everything, moved by his intense desire to save us. He could have achieved that redemption with just one drop of his blood, but he shed all the blood he had, to the point that, with the spear, the last drops of his blood were mixed with water. He desired that nothing from his body should be spared to redeem us. He not only gave his life for us, but he wanted to suffer every physical and moral suffering. Each drop of blood that fell from his body was a drop of life that led to death. He wanted to pass through all those small deaths to show to what pain he was our friend. From this outpouring comes on one hand the trust we should have in his mercy, since he did so much for us, enveloping us in his blood and presenting us to the Eternal Father to ask forgiveness for our sins. We should also plead for forgiveness. On the other hand, it shows us how horrible the eternal destiny of the reprobate is. To prevent us from this fate, he went to that extreme point of suffering. We should see the terribleness of that evil he wanted us to avoid. So then, considering the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we should measure the bottomless depth of hell. Finally, we must think of the Holy Eucharist, the blood of Christ that was shed along the way of the cross and from the heights of Calvary is entirely present in the Holy Eucharist. When we receive the body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, we should remember that his precious blood shed for us is inside us, laying claim to heaven's mercy for us instead of vengeance, like the blood of Abel. We should receive the Holy Eucharist with great confidence and much joy to receive the body of Christ that ascends to heaven, claiming mercy for us.